hello there, Frederick. I didn't see you there. I was just playing with my mirrorless camera here. Well, as long as you're here, let's talk a little bit about this thing. Uh, so, I guess I'll, maybe I'll mention uh, two things uh, in particular. Uh, one is about this upcoming war between mirrorless and DSLR cameras. And the other is about tools and the art. But I think both of these things play nicely together. And as far as this, this war uh, between uh, mirrorless and DSLR cameras, uh, here's what I think. And my, my uh, thinking continues to mature, and I, I think about it a lot because, you know, I made the big switch. I, I used to carry around giant uh, Nikon DSLRs, uh, but now I carry around these, these little jobs. And I know everyone's wondering, like, oh, what lens is on there? What camera is it? I'll talk about all that in just a minute. That's not really so important, but I will talk about it. So um, uh, a few years ago, I wrote an article called DSLRs are a dying breed. And everyone thought I was crazy, except for maybe the few of you out there that had already jumped on the mirrorless bandwagon. But now more and more people are coming over to this side of the fence. And man, that that article made a lot of people mad. If you look, there's just thousands of comments and very angry DSLR people, you know, you know, prying the DSLR out of my cold, dead fingers, this sort of stuff. I don't know why they get so angry. I think it must come from some place of, of mortal insecurity. I don't, we don't need to psychoanalyze them. But actually, I think we can end up winning this war uh, through our, you know, logical, persuasive arguments about all the incredible advantages that these have over DSLR systems. And frankly, I think we can win this war through our art by making beautiful images with these systems and just kind of softly win them over in this sort of uh, gentle, poetic, persuasive way. I think that will ultimately win the war for us. Now, I might not be telling you anything that you don't already know, but like, this camera, is, it's unbelievable. Like this is the, this is the Sony uh, A7R. I think actually the first time this is premiering is gonna be like at the Panasonic booth or something I'm not sure Frederick you'll you'll know uh, this is clear evidence that I'm not supported by or sponsored by uh, Panasonic or Olympus or even Sony Sony doesn't pay me anything to to do this stuff um, I just love these cameras and this is a it's a full frame camera it has the same size sensor as my Nikon D800 or my Nikon D3X or D4 or whatever uh, it's the exact same size sensor it is just a portion of the weight it is tiny little thing um, the lenses on it are so small. It's nice and light. It's 36 megapixels. I mean, it's an unbelievable machine. And in fact, all the electronics that are in here, when you add in the electronic viewfinder, you know, you don't, if you're a DSLR person watching this, don't be afraid. You can still put your eye right up to this. And you see an unbelievable image. It's surrounded by darkness. Um, it happens to be a digital representation of what's on there. But I argue that the electronics in here are so dang smart that you're gonna get a much higher image quality because you're actually seeing what is on the sensor. So I'll tell you a little story about my, my old Nikon uh, D800E, which is just right there in my studio collecting dust right now. I don't know what to do with the dang thing. It's, it looks sorry in there. You know, sometimes you go into old guys' uh, houses and they have all these shelves with all these old cameras up there, you know, like, oh my gosh, back in the day, we had this thing with the, the baffles and the smoke powder. Well, that, I feel like that's my Nikon D800 in there now. It's just collecting dust. And I, I tell my kids, oh, I used to use that back in the day with that Betamax right beside it. So anyway, when I used to use the D800, I mean, I got great photos. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Some of my best photos were taken with Nikon. It's, it's a fine system. And if you have a Nikon DSLR system or Canon or whatever, it will serve you well for years to come. Don't worry about it. But be ready because you're going to upgrade. Everyone upgrades. Be ready for these kind of systems. But with that D800E, uh, actually it was a plain D800 that I had. Um, I would take a photo, all right, and I'd have it perfectly in focus. It was a, a, a landscape photo. I was looking through the optical viewfinder. I knew I had it nailed, so on and so forth. And I would take the photo, and then I would get back, and sometimes it'd be a little bit soft. I'd be like, well, how did I miss the focus on this? It's impossible. You know, I shot it like F8 or F10. Um, I, it looked like I nailed it in the optical thing, and then I get home, it just feels a little bit soft. But then what you start to realize is that when that mirror flips up and down, even if the back plane, if the focus is off like an, an, an edge of a millimeter or anything like this, and it wasn't just that one camera, I've tried many cameras, every now and then it came out soft. But now that I use this thing, and I'm actually seeing what's on the sensor, and I can zoom into 100% and just tweak out that focus, 
I get sharper photos than I ever have in my entire life. And it's so easy and it's fun, it's liberating. Plus it's a portion of the weight. Uh, the, the lenses are light and magical. More and more lenses are coming out for this thing all the time. But actually one of the great secrets, I think one of the great untouched uh, pieces of knowledge out there is combining this camera body with whatever lenses you happen to already have or a whole series of these incredibly tiny, powerful Leica lenses. Um, this one on here right now is a Leica 50 millimeter um, f1.4 lens and it's a, it's a beautiful lens. It is a super tiny thin adapter right here that allows me to put on any Leica lens. Now it's all manual but don't be scared of that. Um, you know, if you, if you grew up on autofocus or just been using autofocus, you might think there's some black magic with autofocus, like, oh, I don't really know how to, to uh, manually focus. It's actually incredibly easy. Uh, it has this kind of video gamey thing in here called focus peaking, and so you twist it around, and whatever has these little red outlines around it, it's like a video game, it, that's what's in focus. I mean, it's, it's idiot proof, and I absolutely get the most amazing sharp photos. Um, and one thing I'm going to endeavor to work on is sort of a, a lens buying guide for this, this camera uh, for all these Leica lenses. So some of these are super expensive, but there's also like R mount lenses, which are much more inexpensive. And uh, there's an adapter for those as well. So anyway, combining these smarts with like just millions of these older lenses that are just floating around eBay, totally available, people really take care of these lenses. Uh, they're like old classic cars, but they perform effortlessly. So, man, I think this is, this is the X factor. Now, I know a lot of people in the audience probably are on the, the, uh, the micro four thirds system, which is, I, I hate this word, micro four thirds. I don't know what it means. It's such a confusing, it's the worst marketing term ever because the common man doesn't even really know what it means. I'm not even totally sure what it means. In fact, that's actually why I went with the Sony system because I was so confused by the word micro four thirds. I'm like, I don't really even know what that means. But one debate I haven't seen yet, which I would like to see, and I actually don't know the answer to it. I think it would be a nice thing for, for Fred and, and you guys to talk about, or we'll, we'll have a nice discussion about it, is the sensor size of this versus the Micro Four Thirds. Now, this full frame sensor, I believe, is twice as big as that one, which means it can just gather a lot more light. And as you know, I would say like probably half or more than half of my shooting situations, maybe yours too, are on low light. So I think having a giant sensor like this probably just really outperforms those, those other lenses, or I'm sorry, those other sensors. But I don't know that for, for a fact because I haven't done enough testing. Uh, but I think this is an interesting place to say, even like these, the idea of a smaller sensor, sensor this is a Google Glass. This has like a, a super small um, sensor, just like a cell phone. And I think the jury is out on what's going to be happening with these small sensors because I'm sure you've seen incredible iPhone photos, incredible Android photos, and there's a lot of research that's going into these super small sensors. So it's possible that sensor size may not matter so much in the next five years. So this is gonna be a place that, that really goes crazy. All right, now I'll just briefly talk about the, the tools and the art. So one thing not to get caught up in is all the, the hardware side of it, right? I know photography, Probably everyone watching this is like, you know, super high IQ, very intelligent people because photography tends to attract this kind of crowd, right? But if you don't want, if you if, if you don't watch out, what'll happen is you're you'll get like really into all the left brain analysis of the, of the gear and the lenses and the light fall off stuff and all the the optics and the, all the little things that are happening inside the camera. Don't let your brain run away with that because your left brain can run away with that. Let your left brain just kind of uh, release and fall back into your right brain, your artistic side, and have this, all the, all the stuff you know about, all the smart stuff you know about the lenses, let that kind of be the foundation and then kind of float above that and use these tools to make amazing art. Um, even though the tools themselves are totally incredible, Really, I think the, the best way to get your style going is uh, in post-processing, and it's sort of been always my thing. I, you know, I heavily, unapologetically post-process. Uh, we just released this brand new HDR tutorial, this 10-hour this uh, course. Uh, it's really beautiful, uh, but I think probably seven hours of it, uh, you're sitting there watching me post-process because I think this is really, really a fun way to do it. And these, these cameras, I think these mirrorless cameras, are absolutely the best way to just go capture the light 
as sort of a starting point, and then you can finish off with your own style afterwards. I think that's really how you can define yourself and your style, or at least find yourself, because I do think that that cameras and post-processing, this is kind of one of the greatest self-discovery tools of our age. And so as we all work together with, with having these fun cameras and with the post-processing and sharing online and this sort of stuff, I think we can all uh, get better together. And this idea that we're all working together to make art and beautiful things and beautiful photos is, is really fantastic. So anyway, I'll just kind of wrap it up with that and, and wish you well. And uh, thank you for watching. And I don't know if you come to the blog or anything or look at my photos or anything like that or watch some of the tutorials but anyway if you do thank you thank you very much I appreciate it I, I don't take any any of it for granted really I don't um, I feel honored to be in this like amazing world of photography now because I mean this is isn't this the best time to be alive and have a camera and take photos I think you know we're all right in the middle of it so I think it's um, I think it's a really exciting time all right well Frederick um, I will I will sign out and uh, I'll see you later. And if anyone has any questions at all, just, uh, you know, drop me a note. And I'll, um, I'll do my best to get back to you. Okay, any question, big or small. All right. Okay, all right, bye.